I don't recall people saying, you know what, we're losing confidence. It was my observation by the various comments about how come this is still going on? When is this going to end? How come it's getting bigger? So from I was inferring from those comments, when is uh, Ottawa Police Service going to do some enforcement? Uh, when are they going to deal with this situation? Um, I could hear the impatience, I could, I could hear the frustration, and from that, I inferred that they were losing confidence in Thanks. Ottawa Police Service. All right, let's bring in CDB Senior Political Correspondent, Glenn McGregor, joining me now following this. Glenn, good to see you. What we're hearing from Brenda Lucky, it's uh, quite crucial as well as we've sort of been trying to follow the narrative here, which has been kind of all over right. the place during the few weeks of this inquiry. It has been very scattered and a lot of different opinions, but Lucky was, of course, a very much anticipated witness because she was really kind of the key contact between law enforcement of, uh, forces across the country, including the RCMP, of course, and the people in the federal cabinet and some of the senior public servants in the federal government. And they were the ones who ultimately made the decision to invoke the act, potentially, we'll hear more about this this afternoon as she continues her testimony, based on her advice and whether or not the act was actually needed. Now, we do know from some of the notes that were submitted before the uh, com committee hearing today that Lucky told Cabinet on February 13th, this is the day before the act is invoked, mm -hmm. that they have existing measures in uh, the, the, the laws they currently have, plus also the state of emergency that the government of Ontario had de declared to make arrests and to possibly deal with uh, getting clearing some of these protests. Uh, but uh, she also said at the same time in those notes that, well, if you are going to invoke the Emergencies Act, here's kind of our shopping list, some other things we'd like to have in it, some other provisions that would be useful. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to say so far from what we've heard from the commissioner, whether or not she ultimately believed the act was needed or whether, as her notes strongly suggest, yes. that the police already had the existing tools in the law and through the Ontario State of Emergency to deal with this, not just in the uh, occupation of Ottawa, that had been going on uh, at the, for uh, three weeks at that point, mm -hmm. uh, but also, of course, in Windsor and also uh, in Coots, Alberta. We'll hear from the uh, Alberta uh, commissioner uh, for the RCMP uh, this afternoon for his take on that. But uh, this testimony is kind of rolling out now, and it, and it follows a piece that we have not really yet heard from anyone in law enforcement who said, yes, absolutely, we needed Angie. The emergencies act to be invoked. Yeah, exactly. And that's really interesting because Brenda Lucky is also being very, very careful with her words, trying to clarify what she meant, even in terms of what was said in emails and sort of what her focus was going to be. Uh, you mentioned that we're also going to he be hearing from the Alberta Commissioner as well uh, in terms of what their take is uh, on what exactly happened. Because when we make the comparison between what happened in Alberta at the uh, uh, Amb Ambassador Bridge in Windsor, even what we saw in downtown Toronto for that weekend, Compared to what happened in Ottawa, right. of course, a lot of heads are, are, are being scratched here. What more are we expecting this week then, Glenn? Yeah, well, we've heard testimony from uh, the, the Ontario Provincial Police that they kind of went to school on Ottawa's experience when the convoy was headed towards Queen's Park, and they were much better uh, prepared. Alberta, though, a different situation. And some of the testimony uh, last week we heard uh, from people who uh, were in Coots, and they said basically... Again, the Emergencies Act, what, although it was invoked uh, the day that that protest essentially ended, uh, it was the arrest by the RCMP of 13 individuals, including some on weapons charges and ultimately some on um, uh, a, a conspiracy to, to commit murder of RCMP officers, mm -hmm. that dissolved that protest. That The other protesters saw what was going on, saw the pictures of this weapons cache that had been found. They decided to uh, abandon that. So we'll hear more from, uh, as I said, the, the top uh, Mountie uh, in Alberta uh, this afternoon. Then next week, uh, we're gonna, er, throughout the week, we're going to have uh, 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 more testimony from people in, uh, involved with CSIS. The, the head of CSIS is going to uh, talk about the intelligence piece, mm -hmm. what their concerns were about uh, what they call uh, ideologically motivated violent extremism, the possibility mm -hmm. that these protests could have, could have uh, attracted some uh, far right or extremist groups that could have become violent. And of course, that is also one of the inputs mm -hmm. that was being taken to cabinet and that the cabinet, including the prime minister, ha ultimately had to make that decision on whether or not they would invoke the act. So we'll hear from more from them. And then, of course, we'll get into the, uh, the other ca the, the frontline cabinet ministers on this, Marco Mendicino, Bill right. Blair. Then ultimately, Angie, uh, we'll hear from the Prime Minister. We will, and that will be very interesting testimony indeed. All right, Glenn, thank you so much for this. CDV's Glenn McGregor for us in Ottawa.